Hey everyone, this will be a quick summary video about patch 1.15 that is coming December 13th along with the Tide of Desolation event to close the Tide trilogy. In this video I'll talk about everything that is new or changed with update 1.15 so it won't include the event but I will cover that in the future. However I will still go over all the new weapons and the new weapon variants and there is pretty big changes in this update. One of the biggest things are hunt progression changes. Now the progression is faster and easier than before since you get overall more XP from AI and overall XP to get rank 100 is reduced. But also for prestiging players all weapon unlocks are unlocked at rank 1. So yeah, you can play Nitro or Mosin at rank 1. But all the variants and custom ammo has to be unlocked with XP like it's currently now. Tools and consumables are no longer put together and they all have their unique unlockable. So for example if you want to unlock stamina shot you don't have to use small stamina shot like 10 times and it's gonna be based on the rank unlock. Also, Handler's reward got also doubled in the bloodline, so you're gonna have way more money if you're prestiging. Every player kills now equally 450 XP instead of relying and being based on MMR of the player, and weapon progression won't be shared with teammates anymore. The weapon variants and custom MMO XP requirements are based on compact, medium, shotgun and long category. Long category obviously costs the most XP to unlock, and the compact is the cheapest. One of my favorite things is the recruit rework. It's way more worth to take tier 3 hunter than a legendary hunter, for example. All recruits have been reworked and now offer better deals and their equipment is supported by their traits. They also all come with 2 random consumables and 3 tools. Tier 1 and 3 hunters get 2 traits, tier 2 get 3 traits and tier 3 gets 4 traits. And the traits are amazing. This will actually make tier 3 hunters worth taking, but legendary hunters still got changed because of this. The legendary hunters will be worth $100, but they will always have at least 7 upgrade points. Now this might be unlike change, but free hunters only show when you are below twenty thousand dollars. The lower the balance, the more free hunters you get. Okay, let's move from progression and take a look at other changes. You got more weapon inspect animations, and now you can inspect all rifles and all shotguns in the game. This includes their variants, but also some legendary versions that have unique inspects. Feel free to try them out on shooting range once you can. A big part of this update is also controller improvements for both PC and console. But I will skip that for now. And if you are interested, you can watch this official hunt video that covers it all with great examples. Some of our favorite traits are returning in the game as burn traits and it's death cheat and relentless. Currently it was on a shadow and it was very rare to find it in game from midheads or in game spawn. But I'm a fan of more burn traits. Also a few existing traits got merged. For example, the scope myth is only one trait, same as steady aim and iron eye is now replacing all the ADS traits for rifles. Hundred Hands and Uclaw been merged into single trait, Excellent and Tomahawk also been merged, and Lightfoot got nerfed because of the 6 star bunny hopping meta where you can jump silently and not make any noise. Your hunter still doesn't make a step sound when you jump, but the hunter is gonna grunt. So because of this, the Lightfoot costs now 5 trait points. You also got a new trait called Martialist, but more about that very soon. You got some price changes but nothing too big, except some melee tools being almost 4 times more expensive making Heavy Knife the cheapest option now. Now let's get to the new equipment that will, like always, be in the Tide of Desolation event progression, but we can take a look at it now. Calvel Pax True Shot. Pax with a longer barrel, having a bit more damage and faster bullet at the cost of the fire rate. And it's a small slot by the way, so you can dual wield it. Dodge Claw, sounds pretty simple. But we have also Dodge Deadeye, which is the first ever small slot weapon with a scope, and this one will be fun. We have Lemat Carbine Marksman, so finally you can use Shotgun with a scope. Drilling Hand Cannon. Like all hand cannons, it has a bit more sway, slower bullet, slower reload, less damage, but it's still a great option. Drilling Hatchet, which is basically a cooler version, and Katana. Yes, it's a medium slot melee coming with its unique trait called Martialist. This trait allows you to perform special attack that does ton of damage. You have to press X to prepare this trait for work. You can test them all on this small mini table at the shooting range that has all the new weapons and weapon variants. Then we got a bunch of amazing custom ammo. Uppercut FMJ, Pax High Velocity, Dodge with Dum Dum and FMJ, so finally Dodge gets first custom memo, Winfield Poison and Centennial High Velocity. Oh my. Then we got some audio adjustments and tweaks. Yes, the audio bug from the last patch is finally fixed and some UI adjustments. Now there is some interesting general updates that I think most people will like. Shooting can no longer be interrupted by dark side. When you ADS, you cannot switch weapons, so there won't be the annoying text on your screen. Mozinagant Obreso variants have reduced recoil. Improved the Lemat Mark II and Lemat Upper Mark to have a shotgun on a line with rival hand cannon. Decreased the sway for Winfield Vandal Deadeye and a Springfield Compact Deadeye. 
Decrease the spread for dodge when being dual wielded. And my favorite, increase the muzzle velocity of Lemat Mark to Weapon Family. Uppercut precision has more a fire spread. And the Ridger Penny Shot gets two extra ammo. Very interesting thing that Flare Pistol, Fusey, Star Shell and Dragon's Breath can ignite down players. And if you have bounty, but you don't have scan, there is still orange glow if enemy players are close than 75 meters. Poison Cloud now lasts 8 minutes. Reduce the light melee stamina consumption of Heavy Knife. Hunters now have increased control over the camera during the vault animation. Increase the heavy melee damage for hammer and sledgehammers. Shock bombs no longer trigger traps. And Deco Fuses now create a small explosion which can destroy windows and doors. In-game shovels also got melee increase and reduce light melee stamina consumption. And the pitchfork also gets less stamina consumption. We get a big nerf to regeneration shot because now it's not constant. If you take damage, the regen will start after 5 seconds, but it's the same speed. Charm Sway is also a bit less to be less annoying on the screen. Now let's get to the other quality of life changes. Rule of 2 change for a bunch of stuff. For example, like cash register envelopes, blueprints can be used by each hunter in the mission once and won't disappear after 2 uses. So if you find golden cash register giving 50 blood bonds, please share with entire server. Sadly, generators have been removed from all the maps, but electric lights stay and will be randomly on or off during night missions. The only way to turn them off is shoot them, but at least there won't be the loud annoying noise from generators. We got a new lootables called War Benches, which spawn in every compound. They can spawn gun oil, blueprint and money punches. Gun oil now gives you one unlock for your weapon and blueprint gives you three unlocks. If you already have all the unlocks of the weapons you're holding, you will get random unlocks. Also, the workbenches can spawn weapon variants that didn't spawn in the game before, like silencers, bayonets, etc. Speed of elevators got doubled, making them a bit more viable. And then there is stuff like new challenges, new skins and ton of bug fixes. Also, for everyone who owns Mikko DLC, you will get a free katana skin that was missing after a bit is out within 48 hours. So this is pretty much everything for this patch. But don't forget, there is also a Tide of Desolation event, which is coming at the same time as this update, December 13th. And if you have any question or if you want any details about anything in the video, feel free to ask me in the comments. And also, share your thoughts. Until then, see you.